Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. Oh, yeah. Apparently. Uh, yeah, on air. Sweet, okay. Let us find out where the co-host is. We ended up sent to this last time. Oh. Oh man! Since we did the last stream, I have um, rewatched *The Amazing Spider-Man 2*. Um, which at this point, I don't even care about its flaws. Like I know they exist, but hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hello. I was just telling our lovely Zero listeners um, about how since last stream I have rewatched The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Despite it, you know, despite it obviously having flaws, I don't really even see or care about them anymore. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was purely a very silly, fun, enjoyable experience. Nice. Good. Uh, Bryn says he should be able to, to turn up tonight, but I'd be on uh, messages. But I'm just wondering, because I think I saw something in, like, an email. Hey, look, it's Insomniac. The Insomniac uh, building. Um... I was thinking, actually, that there might... I think I saw an email from, like, uh, PlayStation that there's actually a way to access the party chats from your phone now. <laughs> what, finally? Because... You know, like, you know, like, like, so not have to be on PlayStation, but can, li can be on your phone and join... A party call with people who are on who are on their PlayStation. Because I've tried that a few times in the past, and I eventually gave up on it because it was it just never worked. Right. Wait, was it was it supposed to be a thing ages ago then? Because I well, thought I, mean, I only just got the go email. You can go on your thing and you can press. You know, you go on your PS app, yeah, hmm. and you go down into. <clears throat> you go down into messages, and if someone's on a voice call that says join voice call, and I clicked on it, plenty of times I attempted this, I clicked on it. Were and... you also on the voice call in thingy? I wasn't. I wasn't even on the voice call in the thingy. Oh. So I thought jo join voice call, and, and then it just kind of hangs for a bit, and then it stopped. But maybe, maybe they have finally fixed it. Maybe. That would be cool. Certainly. I think I did see an email about it. I don't know. Um... Rad Marts. I'd like to access the microphone. It's connecting. Ah. Oh. You've joined the party as yourself as well. Okay. Whoa. That is, um... Uh, okay, there's two of me. <laughs> okay, so that should work. The voice of the Legion. Okay, how do I leave? Me, there we go. Well, now you sound less scary. Okay, so... 
Um, we have figured it out. Get PS app on your phone and use. He's going to need to know his login details for PS. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, hang on. Have you got the stream up? Uh, yes, I do. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> he said it himself. <laughs> Hello again, Bryn. And you can... Oh, we can... he can hear me, can't he? So, yeah, okay. Yeah, Bryn, we just... Uh, so, on the PS app, you can now join calls without being on PlayStation. <clears throat> yeah. And needing the PlayStation headphone controller things. And it might actually, um, you know, not do the nasty, like, sound quality that we get because whenever me and Bryn just do chat calls, he ends up not using headphones because it sounds nicer. But, I mean, if it if it sounds better without him using headphones and he's fine mm. with that, then, that, then it's up to him. But should I just start the final DLC? No. But yeah, boy. you're here and Bryn's kind of here. Well, Bryn's here in spirit and in and in text, while he tries to sort our voice. I shall. I think I shall commence. Should I? I'll, I'll change suit now. Shall I? Shall I? Oh wait. Let's go. I'm going. I'm going the OG. Just seeing the little the the little message you know the message notification flash up is actually so stressful. It's like, <gasps> what is someone saying about me? Do they hate my voice? <laughs> but yeah, no, I actually, I because I made this little like party game sheet for counting the funny things that happen in each of the Spider-Man movies. And then yeah. at the end, at the, then the end of like each a drinking move. game, but with yeah. less drinking. With less drinking, because otherwise you'd be fucking dead. Watson, That's true. Begin um, what as a and heist a at the end of every film, we've rate, we've rated it, and, and I rated Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man two higher than any than any of the Raimi movies. I just, I just, <laughs> I just enjoy it more. It's just a personal thing. I don't think it's better. I just enjoyed it. I just had more yeah. of a fun time rewatching Amazing Spider-Man Two than rewatching the original movies. That's just, that's just yeah. me. I think that's something that a lot of people struggle to separate in their minds. Yeah, you know, like, is it good, good versus enjoyment? Yeah, know? exactly. Like, I'm sure there's lots of movie making things that make the Raimi movies really good mm. while the you know, while the web movies were held back by greedy producers trying to speak to the youth you know getting yeah. in the way of his artistic vision a lot of the way but just from kind of an enjoyment level I think the Raimi movies haven't aged that well in some way mm. and so just for me I had a lot more fun Watching. Hey, yeah. I'm following the police to an Oscorp plant. Sounds like Hammerhead's guys are at it. I like that Got any updates on they, your um, they started doing this thing where they throw you into gameplay mid-swing. Hmm. Like, literally on the web. Which was really cool, because they never did that before. Also, I love how, by this point, I'd learn how to be so fast on the web swinging that I'd overtake the police in... Less than ten seconds. You certainly are overtaking the police. Oh, like they're at the fucking past for me now. Okay, let's deviate off the straight route. Uh, can you check the volume for me? Because I realised I didn't do that at all last oh, week. Oh, yeah. Okay, I will get my um. I'll get my other headphones over. See if da, 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 da. I might change. The volume for me actually because I can't hear the story of the, the um the, the game at all. There we go. <laughs> so Peter and MJ considering a vacation. That'd be nice. Mm. And I am here, cutscene. <clears throat> oh shit, we need to. We. Uh, 
I also, if Brynn ever gets access, I should probably invite him to the thing, you know? Invite him to the chat. <laughs> Yeah. yeah totally. My turn. Oh wait, what? Oh, okay. I'm, um, oh, I'm in gameplay. Bad time to invite. Wait, what did Bryn just say? Sounds pretty good. Okay, cool. Do do do. Oh, he said. He said, I'm in now. What do I do? Okay, uh, just wait a second, Bryn, and. Uh, the volume is pretty good. Okay, cool. Uh, give me two seconds, Bryn. I will just... Well, I can do it. Can you? This is not... I mean, theoretically, can't I? Oh, uh, hang on. I uh, can add players, yeah. Yeah, but do you have Bryn on thing? Mm. I've just done it. Never mind. <laughs> Woot. Wait, are we... Woot. Is this the uh, same chat? Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, no, wait. Okay, hang on. Uh, there we go. We're going to have to change. Hello? Oh, hello, Brinbo! Hang on. I'm hoping Bradley oh. figures out that he needs to, um... Oh, there it is! There he is! Hey! Okay. Oh. Bradley is very quiet. Hello? Hello? We can all- I can hear everyone. I can hear everyone too much. Is there some weird feedback thing going on? Because I'm hearing repeated phrases. Uh, oh, Bryn doesn't currently have headphones in. Ah, okay. That explains that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> he's just- he's just getting his headphones on. And then it'll be sorted. Bum, ba -bum, ba -ba -da -bum, ba -bum. Uh, I can I hear you, yes? On, oh, if that's the question you're asking, then I can put my headphones in again and double check. Although, considering... Oh, he, he, I think he'll be alright on the stream. If we can hear him. Because I control the balance with my headphones. Yeah, I mean, as long as we can hear Brim, it will just sound very confusing to the one other person likely to watch this. Oh yeah, I haven't told him that I'm streaming tonight. That said, I do stream every time, and he's and he's he should never he shouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it's fairly consistent. Who is this person? Um, was Brim about to ask? Uh, yes, I believe so. It is my friend from. Is my friend from work? Is my friend from uni? Yes. Same he's here. he's normally at work, and he he's very bad <coughs> worker, very bad employee. He um, watches my streams while at his desk with no sound, <laughs> with headphones in, I think. <laughs> That's worse, surely, or were you watching it with no sound? Yeah. You OK? 
okay? Yeah. Long time no see. Who do you work for? <laughs> yeah. Who works for Hammerhead. Where is this Hammerhead? Whoa, whoa! Can't we like go grab a coffee and catch up like normal people? By the way, I love your new hovercrafty thing. Tell me everything you know. Yeah, I talk a lot better without a gun in my face. You have three seconds. Just put the guns down. One. We really gonna do this? Two, six, nine, eleven, seven, three. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Ow. Jesus. In, out, in, out. How do we have to find Hammerhead? I wish I knew. But if we stop punching each other, maybe we can work together. Well, is, is it uh, like a random people vote or a fan vote or a critic? Or, you know, because like they do those for games, don't they? So yeah, player's choice. Yeah. And like, I don't know that many people who knew when these things were happening, so... Ow! Who knows? God, I hate this fight. Working with him. Wow! Now I'm insulted. I do not know you. Obviously. And I do not trust you. You will stay out of my way or suffer the consequences. Stay out of your way while you do what? Like a mean. Like a mean though. Oh my God! Imagine if it was the year that the Emoji Movie came out and people. Oh Jesus Christ! That would actually win just for people. Oh god, yeah. Well, at least... At least... Oh wait, no, hang on, what am I even talking about? Fucking spider us 1 best animated feature. I was saying, like, it would be cool if, you know, because Across the Spider-Verse could win popular vote, and then I completely, like, being the idiot I am, forgot that Spider-Verse fucking won best animated feature, so, yeah. If it's if it's as good as the first one. Hmm. Well, I didn't think it was going to be the same directors. They were just going to produce it, and... But apparently they are directing it again now, so... That is good, because... What happened to you? I thought you were a good guy! I am good at... Hmm, no, Insta Spider-Verse is really good, but... I didn't stop? enjoy Mitchell's vs. the Machines. Lost in translation, I guess? But they didn't direct it, they just produced it, so I wondered if it was, like, lacking that... I don't know. What happened that you can thank me by not dying? We didn't, we didn't finish it, it was just, we got to a point where, like, and we just realised none of us were enjoying it. Which was a real shame. Mm. Oh, Encanto is fucking amazing, though. How did you know that? It's my job to do things. So I imagine she's here to stop Hammerhead from stealing all her shipments. Which is good. Yeah. Maybe you guys can team up. Yeah, that doesn't feel very likely at this point. Listen, I'm gonna have you see oh wait. Have you uh Bradley, have you seen the Moon Knight trailer? Screwball? Uh has there been a new one? Yes, there was oh. something. There was like it was either a teaser or something. I don't know. Better get there before she hurts someone. He's. I didn't realize. Well, if it isn't my favorite bug theme superhero, ready for season three. I mean, it might be one of the personalities. See what? Sorry. Oh right, yeah. The internet's going off at the moment because apparently there's going to be there's um, Ezra Miller filmed a cameo on the Guardians of the Galaxy free set for Peacemaker, and there's also a Aquaman cameo where they joke that he fucks fish. 
And apparently uh, Twitter is getting very annoyed at it, and it's like, really? See that? Let me tell me when you guys see that. Oh god. <clears throat> yeah, because I thought it was I, I was just fucking completely autopilot muscle memorying, and normally after you throw an explosive like that, you have to rapid press. Um, you know, the yeah the quick time event to get to blow it up. But of course for this you have to time it. Oh shit. That is two I fucked up. That was that one was no excuse. Well, I've got the trophy now, so it literally doesn't matter what score I get. Uh, release the Schumacher cut is trend is gonna happen today or tomorrow. It's all happening again. And takes the silver in the crazy Psycho Olympics. Well, that was a gluten-free show. Filling, but not satisfying. Hmm. Hey, MJ. Sorry we got cut short earlier. I had to deal with Screwball. Mm. Again. You seem to have a lot of women in your life lately. And all of them challenging. Except for you, of course. <laughs> bullying and asking for more yeah. and everything. Have you seen the DC films, Bradley? Oh, yeah. Oh. I, mean, I, I mean, obviously, okay. Snyder Cut was far and away better than the original version. Yes. The, the, I mean, the weeding cut. Says that we just don't even mention his name. He's just, oh, <laughs> God. Such a scumbag. I need to put these guys back behind bars for Then it went to his head. Hmm. Guess it's time to swing the band hammer. Ready to upload some more premium content? We're trending! Keep it up, SM! Smoke Monster 42 ads. Can we do another photo bomb? Well, it's like um, I watched some of the behind the scenes of. Uh, house and it was it Brian Singer who produced it and wrote a copy like the early stuff and and he was like he also he also the guy who did a few of the X-Men films that guy oh yeah that also but yeah I, I, I wasn't sure if that was him um, Uh, but he, in interviews, he was like, he was like, he, he, you know, he wrote House to be relate, like, he was like, oh, it, it, I thought, like, I felt like I was writing myself, and we were like, so, did you just basically admit if you're a massive asshole <laughs> who thinks he's better than everyone? Because <laughs> that's the character of House. <laughs> well, I mean, give him two more seasons than he would have done that. Are you a professional? Come on, guys, come on, come on, come on. How of it? Oh. I just need them to walk into the thing. Come on, come on, come on. Someone, someone. Walk towards. F And restore the Snyder verse was the f immediately after. Yeah. Yes! That shot is 
Which would be fine. I would be fine. I would be very happy with that. Just saying. Same on the ground. But. Oh, I, I, I agree on the ground that I think Andrew Garfield kind of got screwed over. And uh, I Spider Man. Think... I'd like, I just think it would be a cool, you know, it's like, it's interesting to see how they bring back a franchise, but not even a franchise, just to see what they do, because it would be something that hasn't really been done before. Well, they just got more to do. Mm. That's the difference. And I look good doing it. Yeah, that's what me and Bradley were talking about last week. We were just kind of realizing that Garfield, you know, there was so much good. It's just, well, people just. Well, there's nothing actually wrong with the Amazing Spider-Man films. The second one was just they just jam-packed too much into it because, I mean, we know about the Sony leaks and the emails and. Time, I'll swing around the city and do some spidey stuff. Well, yeah, but again, that was like, yeah, that, but it's such a tiny part of the movie. But then at the same time, there was more scenes filmed, and the scenes that were filmed that were cut out of it would have given that more validity. It's such a bizarre way to start the second film with that whole like 10 minute section to basically forget about it. I don't know that one. Oh, I heard about that. Hey, Peter. Uh, just checking in. You oh, in? shit. Sort of. How are your assignments coming? You mean school assignments or spider assignments? Both. But yeah. First. I'm all caught up on school stuff. Working on spider... Mm. Open up. Or we'll open it for you. Leave me alone. Got to get to that driver before they do. Hey, pal. You just unlocked this door. Hey, real quick. Hey, guys. I think this might not be your car. You trying to break in. They called it back up. That would have been. It's unconventional to be sure. Have you have you seen twenty the Jump Street movies, Bradley? Oh no, not yet. That sounds oh. like a, something to add to the list. That's Ice Cube, isn't it? Yeah. You guys know I'm not leaving till you do, right? Hmm. I think no matter what your perspective is, Please. I think they. Is that you know I I want to see Amazing Spider-Man three because from the perspective of I didn't enjoy those those first two movies in the franchise it's like well yeah but there was problems behind the production from the get go because of who was the most in charge Avi fucking Arad 
and eat. He was he was almost the Spider-Man who got rolled into the MCU and Oscorp Tower from Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 would have appeared in the skyline of New York and the Avengers. Hmm. I'm amazed you haven't seen Tick Tick Boom. Have you seen Tick Tick Boom, Bradley? I have not seen Tick Tick Boom. Got it. Headed there now. Question for you. We knew Hammer had stole most of the Sable weapons already, and a bunch of equipment from Lee's lockup. Now he's stealing Sable tech that's bound for Simcaria. Where is he putting all this stuff? No idea. But if we can find out where, we can cut off his supplies. I'll try to cross-reference his men's activity with the city. <laughs> See if I can't nail down a location. Good plan. Hey, so I've been reading up on the situation in Simcaria. There's a ruling dictator attacking his own people. Apparently Silver Sable's been working alone to arm the rebels and fight back, but she's losing. Sounds like she could really use the stuff Hammerhead is stealing from her. Explains why she's so angry and desperate. Maybe, but I also think that angry is just her default emotion. I'll let you know what I find at the shipping facility. What Raimi cut? <laughs> <laughs> What Ravy cut? Was, he uh, fucking Ravy got cut. so much control of those movies. He was forced to add Venom in, and that was it. Oh Jesus! Uh, Blade Runner. Have you seen 2049 yet? He's here! Get moving! Oh yeah. Hey, don't leave. That's where Bradley started watching films. <laughs> kind of. It was before that. It was just games, wasn't it, Bradley? Pretty much, yeah. Um. Uh, well, I started with. Uh, we, 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 it's just like a once every Sunday thing. Hey, but... wait, no, Brim. Guess what Bradley's first MCU movie was? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, Br Bradley, this is totally, totally embarrassing slander for you, yeah, but. It's just gonna, like, make him lose respect for me. I see well, I don't think that's going. possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Jesus, he's not that bad. Um, having said that, I, uh, I, I, I started. This was this was a movie I saw on the off chance before I started like properly watching movies, kind of thing. Okay, just two more. Don't think bad films, just think of film but it, if it's really weird to be your first MCU film. That's your clue. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what his second one was? <laughs> no. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming. Kill someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see him just be a happy-go-lucky kid in a school. Yeah. Oh, I hate this one. Okay, back to the chase. Sable, what are you doing? You're just escalating things. Let me handle the rest of these guys. No, they can not escape with this equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, I, I, I went for all the MCU movies to start with, so I've seen them all now. Uh, which except is, uh, No Way Home. Ow. Except No Way Home, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Because, uh, Tom was giving me some grief for that. 
<laughs> well, that's not that guy. Oh Jesus, Bryn, why have you seen Moonfall? Oh right, okay, fair enough. God, they really love the like the coming back into the action while swinging, don't they? <laughs> because of acting or because of cancelling? Oh Jesus, what Russell, what's Russell Brand done now? Oh, fucking hell. Oh my god! You know that kind of, that scene that kind of got dogpiled on in Endgame where all the women just line up? Even though Captain Marvel could just fucking do it on her own. Yeah. And Scarlet, which could have been off killing Thanos again. Um, yeah, like there's a picture of them all together for like from when they were filming that scene and people are basically just ticking them off from when they're getting cancelled. <laughs> yeah, Brie Larson NFTs, Gwyneth Gr Paltrow NFTs. Well, yeah, but most recently. Anti-vaxxers. You do what you gotta do. Look, oh, okay. We both want the same thing. If we work Sorry, together, Brent. we'll find him. Trust me. All right, cheers, man. Yeah. Right. We work together. Like partners. Bye. Have a good one. Yeah. Partners. So you'll call me? Well, that wasn't inconspicuous. Sorry, I just saw Silver sure Sable put a tracker on 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 uh, Spider-Man's bicep. Oh yeah, but he didn't notice that. <laughs> Actually, wait. Tri that's the tricep, isn't it? My bad. Attention units, there's an assault in progress. That doesn't sound good. Better check it out. So where was I? Oh yeah. Both. But school comes first. <laughs> I totally... I love it when but they come back to conversations on the phone. But doing a fucking massive, like, um, movie level set piece full of explosions and shit, and then finishing it off to respond to Miles saying... Yeah, to talk about homework and spider homework. That's really funny to me. It matters a lot if you're the pendulum. What? Oh, wait. So you do all oh. Well, that was an interlude with our um, with our favorite with our favorite so Brin. You, if you want to get good at it. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. Do 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 do. Do. Oh my God! Wait, that was a tweet from producer Jared. After Spider-Man's latest destructive rampage, argues that Spider-Man is bad for hysteria. Hysteria? Hysteria? Huh. How do you pronounce that? I've always seen it as hysteria. Okay. Wait. Don't oh. I say hygiene? How the fuck is... Okay, now I want to hear that podcast. That's some bullshit. How the fuck is Spider-Man bad for hygiene? Uh... Is, is someone shaving in the? Is someone shaving and then like they hear an explosion caused by Spider-Man stopping some bad guys and they cut themselves shaving? Does that count as hygiene? Mm -hmm. I'm very confused. By the way, 
So, you know in the main game you have to fight all those fucking Fable Agents and they've got really bad art, like, just armor on and it's a massive pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. And then in the second DLC you have to deal with the Hammerhead folks who don't have armor on, but they're just fucking overpowered to shit. Now they've combined the two. Nice. This was my nightmare. Oh, by the way, it was also this DLC that gave us access to the Spider-Verse suit. Ah, cool. So, yeah, that's nice. I like the Spider-Verse suit. I kind of wish they'd made it the advanced suit easter egg as well, like they'd added that in as well. Because that would have been cool to see a different version of the advanced suit, because it's just an easter egg in Spider-Verse in one of the, um... You know when he shows when they go down into his spider cave or whatever? Yeah. And it has all the suits in the in the glass cases. The advanced suit is one of them. And I just ah. think that would have been cool if they'd if they'd had that in this game as well. Given that it was, you know. Whatever. Let's not go that way. Oh, we should, uh, depending on how far we get through... Uh, is your YouTube still up? Um, not presently, but it shouldn't take long. Because when we, um, because I think we'll finish this, uh, within this episode or next episode. Hmm. So, we should probably say we're going to be doing the next thing on your channel. Yeah. And um, link to you know, and be like, and I'll I'll put it in the link thing. So, well, Xander can find it basically. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I never got to mention earlier, which it would have been would have been cool to say when Brent was around, but uh, last night, uh, last last Sunday. Sadly, um, I do not have time for Ocean Swell, which is because I was at a fencing competition. Did you win? Did you win? Did you win? Did you win? I got runner up. Oh fuck yeah! Okay, ready? Wait, is runner up second? Yep. Fuck yeah! What a dude! How many kids did you stab? Um, all of them but the last one. Well, I mean, that's why I'm running around. Well, no, but <laughs> did you not stab him a couple times? Oh, yeah, the fight, last last fight was five ten. Uh, five, ten is that eight. just five touches versus ten touches? Basically, yeah. I love how out of context uh, fencing can sound either really creepy or really violent. Yeah, or like yeah. very criminal. Like it's either stabbing. Or touching. or touching, which just yeah, that's a whole different you know. We oh, don't we they, don't. I think we go for other things. It always, you know, we go we go for the French touche rather than <laughs> touching. But that like... just sounds like that sounds like you're talking about your ass. <laughs> Tushy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Ow. Well, you didn't want to show off in front of Brynn, obviously. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would have, I would have, I would have, I would have taken that, I would have taken the victory if, if not for the fact that Doug, the guy I was, no, the guy who won, mm -hmm. just doesn't fall for any of my mind game BS. <laughs> oh, were you trying to do what I do in video games, which is just bullshit and cheeky bastard techniques? I mean, considering that's fencing in a nutshell. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, so how how do you not oh, fuck, win all of our online battles then? If you're if you do that for a professional sport where you come I mean, runner up in do that. It was just a club championships thing. Well, it yeah, like I know, but open. it's still <laughs> it's still a thing that you teach. So, Whoa, okay, I just got hit by a rocket off screen. Love it. You love to see it. Ow! Oh, I'm dead. You are dead. <laughs> imagine, imagine killing a guy live on stream and going too much for you to handle. <laughs> Jesus! That is 
messed up. That 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 is total. That is crossing the line twice, kind of thing. Guess it's time to swing the band. Oh, I have that to do it again. <sighs> so, Ocean's Twelve this Sunday. Ocean's Twelve this Sunday, and I'm looking forward to it because, of course, the first one was really good as well. Mm. Can you guess what we're watching this Saturday? Uh Tricky, actually. Like, wait, actually, you're watching loads of Spider-Man stuff. Are you watching? Are you doing a rewatch of Spider-Verse? Nope. Are you doing um? Homecoming? Yeah! Spider Ooh. Saturday, part three, the Holland movies. I haven't actually seen Homecoming in so long, I think. I, my memory is not good for these things. Mm. I liked it the first time, I also liked it the second time. How many times have you watched it? What the fuck?! I've never seen that dodge animation before! Did you see that? Oh, I mean, you will see it in about in a second. It, 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 it's like in slow mo. I did think I just saw it. That was weird pirouette tiny. thing. Like the bit where it looked like he was moving in a way he shouldn't be moving, kind of thing. Yeah, but like he kind of did like a backflip in in the air on a person, off a person. X X before the dawn. X X right. <laughs> What? This big internet, don't at me. Oh, it's just, just screwball. Oh, right. Wait, did she just- Oh, is she saying it in the subtitles, which I'm not paying yeah. attention to because I'm getting my ass handed to me again. I hate these fucking challenges. These are not the things to get you to play this game, are they, Bradley? But uh, <laughs> to, for the most part, I'm what, just deliberate. Well, no, the fucking screwball mission. But to be honest, I'm just putting off doing a mission fairly soon, where that I just get my ass handed to me every single fucking time. I think actually no, last time I did it first time, but I still didn't enjoy it. <laughs> oh, yes I am, he's a professional photographer. Oh, I love the going into the photo mode. Saves you! And find me someone else to kill. Thank you. Have you got any articles for us today, my good friend the Brothers? That is a good what, question. What could Let's we see. think? What what could we look for? Is there any oh, burning the... Spider Man questions you have that we could look into? Hmm. Whoa. Um, or is there? Have you seen the Doctor Strange trailer, the new one? Yeah. What did you think of that? Uh Oh yeah, you sent it to me. Of course, I've seen it. Oh, <laughs> did I send it to you? I totally yeah, forgot just, that. I just remembered it was you who sent it to me. <laughs> yeah. Oops. I um, am a good memory person. Uh, so am I, because it took me until then to remember it again, and it was you who said it to me. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I thought, um, that had me going, yo, what the fuck, every, every, like, couple of seconds, and the visuals are, are just phenomenal. It's so Doctor Strange. I do like, like, I, that was something I liked in Doctor Strange 1, and it's something I mm. like in the trailer of Doctor Strange 2, the fact that there's weird, trippy shit that happens. Oh yeah. In freaky Nothing but dimensions. weird. It's a multiverse of madness. Oh wait. Um. But yeah, uh, I I hear we're getting America. I hear we're getting like. Uh, we've we've got like. My only annoyance with America, in and this is saying it before the film even comes out, but mm -hmm. she's a really cool character, but she's also. You know, older, and the main kind of person that she gets, you know, kind of like she's best friends with Kate Bishop, and Kate Bishop is mm. 25 or played by a 25 year old actress. I don't know how old she's supposed to be in the show, in the you know, movies. And Berica Chavez is played by a 15 year old. So, uh, oh, I see. 
that's not going to be happening, is it? Also, especially considering that some people read a lot of romance into their thing because America's yeah. a lesbian, or, which also, sadly, probably isn't going to be a thing because it's Disney. Yeah. So. Um... Oh no! Uh, Disney's shit. like. Like, I, it's so see-through when they're like, check out our, ch check it out first. Check out the, the first, character. yeah. And it's like some person in the background. Who it's they like, edit out for the China release. Congratulations, you certainly have, you know, like... Also, every you, you, film... You've fixed homophobia! You've done it! Congrats! Every it's film like, that they do that, Christ, there's a new, there's like, literally look up all, like, there's so many articles where they say, this is the first time we've done this, and it's like, no, because there's... It's 17 other shit. articles saying <laughs> that same thing. Just well, oh my go god, wow, this is incredible. But... I am in your debt. Yeah, um... What were these guys like, asking? Eternals was like one of the only... Was, 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 was alright. Uh, like, in, in the sense that... It, was more of a it would be... War. I feel like it would be pretty hard to, like, edit out. Yeah. But they took them... So yeah, so maybe that, that gives me hope then, actually, I guess. Let you know if I find any. Nice to meet you. But it was, you know, I don't know, yeah. It, but I still feel like they could have just edited out the scenes with the dad. Spider Man. You know? Mm. Or, I don't know, for that, like, I just. It might not have even been released in China. Oh, That's the other possibility. Because that I'm might have been why it didn't do very well in China, I don't hey, think. Okay. I don't think it did very well box office wise. A pandemic kind of resurgence, but if it didn't have the China boost, that might have been why. Film, however, didn't open in China and isn't expected to be granted a release in the future. Yep, there it is. Okay! <laughs> yep, well. <sighs> China doth protest too much. My jailhouse source also said mm. that Hammerhead's using this Project Olympus stuff to quote, improve himself. If there's one thing I'll say about the turn if there's one bit of praise I'll give Eternals, it's absolutely that then. Yeah. They, t they told China to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, At least it around. said, no, your money is not like better this. than my integrity. Mm. And... <laughs> Guarantee that won't be the case with the next one though. Yeah, I'm just your little victories, I guess. Mm. Hey, I think that's the place um, having said, how do we get onto that? Oh yeah, we were talking about like America and what she's gonna. So, yeah. If that's the case, she's probably gonna be like a like a more of a MacGuffin than a character. Yeah. Do you think? I mean, her mum's uh, lesbians, obviously. So I and she's got a pride like. Um, what are they even called? Uh, you know what? You know you can get those little designs that you could stitch onto jackets and hats and shit. What are they called? Um, badges, patches. Um, uh, yeah, patches, like a fabricy thing. She's got one of them on her jacket. Um. So, hey, look! It's the last time we'll see the original face. Um. Oh my god, there's a person on an umbrella. Mary Poppins style or uh no, reverse Mary Poppins. Okay, sure. Reverse Mary Poppins. You'll see it in a second. But so people are wondering whether they'll make her Well, that certainly is a person on an umbrella. Yep, they'll remove her own um sexuality and instead make it just her mum's which would be just fucking awful mm. but I mean at this point I don't know I'm slowly becoming more and more disillusioned with the MCU going forward like I'm very kind of you know I'm willing to be impressed by the stuff that actually comes out but seeing stuff in production if I can't get next doesn't is, give you it doesn't give me much confidence, you know, especially like if they change Miss Marvel's powers and if they remove guys, America Chavez. Is that or just so that they, she doesn't have to be an inhuman or what? 
<laughs> I mean, I don't know whether, yeah, whether it... Well, like, she's too close to Mr. Fantastic. There's the whole kind of, like, female characters can't have unpretty powers, which is one of the main things that, they, that the writers didn't... Why they chose that power is because too often female characters are given, like, lasers and pretty powers so they mm. can remain attractive while kicking ass. Which is such a fucking, like, you know, galaxy brain when you realise how frequent that is. Yeah. Yeah, actually. So, you know, if they take away her stretchy powers and just how cool they are, I'm going to be really disappointed. And I just think it's a shame that America Chavez isn't going to be the same age as Kate Bishop unless, like, she spends some time out, you know, she's a multiverse character, so maybe... She Maybe they, they'll introduce her, as you said, more like a MacGuffin to this whole thing, and then she'll go away and train for a couple of years, and they'll have a different actress who's older. I don't know, I just... It would be nice to have that relationship between her and Kate Bishop that's so good in the comics, because they're on the same level. Also, yeah. you know, people are also worried that she's just going to become the new Peter Parker, where it's like, Oh my god, Avengers, you're so cool! Uh, yeah which, you know, Kate Bishop was a little bit like as well, which she isn't in the comics. Kate Bishop is so, like, she's the cool one and everyone yeah, else isn't what, as cool as her. what little I've seen, she is much is more, like... Which Hay 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 Hayley Steinfeld Hayley can Steinfeld? do in fucking spades. So, what you know, it, um... Let's see if I can like, I hope they it. give her the chance to do that going on now that she's an established Something's Hawkeye. She's just like, mm. yeah, fuck, fuck the world, I'm the better doing. archer. You know, everything, all that stuff. What? Yeah, sorry, I feel like I've just taken us completely off whack. Where were we Hi, talking? Um, are we talking about the mo mo Multiverse of Madness trailer? Oh yeah, because I asked you if you saw the trailer and then you were like... Yeah. Yeah, you, you, were, say, you were saying... That you think America Chavez is going to be a MacGuffin, and I agreed, and then I ranted. I do apologize. I am bad at this. <laughs> but the rants are good. Yeah, but Bradley, you need to be able to tell me and bring like to shut up. <laughs> me especially. We managed to get back on track anyway, didn't we? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I brought it back to the MacGuffin fairly, fairly naturally, but yeah, the rules from last time do apply. The old shut up uh, rule. Um, so what was the. Uh, so no. you looked what comes up. After that? What America do you mean? Appears, uh, like, America appears in the trailer, doesn't she? I swear she. Yes. Like, yeah, uh, she appears well, fairly oh, early yeah, Sir on. Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Ten, uh, Sir Patrick Stewart is there, which, you know, big. Like, I mean, Whoa. it's either. It is, of course, either the. Woo, Professor X, or haha, you thought it was going to be Professor X. Well, no, it will be Professor X, but it will probably be the last appearance, because I doubt they'll use Patrick Stewart in I mean, the, the main universe. I must be getting on in years. Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't want to put that kind of risk, you know, into things. And I think it would benefit to have a new version. Because, you know, like... Um... And these are all supposed to be variants, so, you know, apparently the old um, Mr. Fantastic... He's 81 now! The, you know, Mr. Fantastic's supposed to show up as well, is rumoured. The old version, you know, it's like... And it could be the dark Doctor Strange who's part of that, this, you know, those people in those chairs. Hmm. That's what I've seen rumoured. Have you seen the original Fantastic Four films? Uh, yeah, the first one was... The first one was... The first one was pretty good, like, not nothing massively special, needed no. more actual The Fantastic I, Four. I Fantastic really enjoy Four. them, but... I feel like it's just, like, in terms of them being The Fantastic Four, there's oh. just the and the, um... Dumped in the Matter? It's this mission. It's ah, fucking sneaked off on me. <laughs> Bradley, I'm gonna cry, and you're gonna have to deal with that. Okay. Or I'm gonna do uh, very, or I'm gonna do surprisingly well, and then you'll be like, oh, "Hey, this worked out." Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry. Continue. I just wanted to whine a bit. <laughs> oh fuck. Um. 
Oh no, the train has left the station. Okay. Patrick Stewart. Patrick and... Stewart getting on a bit, recast him for the actual bit, MCU. Recast him for the MCU. Give someone else uh, a shot. Yeah. I mean, they could bring in McAvoy. I rather like his. McAvoy's an amazing actor, but honestly, I feel like they kind of fucked over that that series of films after Days of Future Past. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. So <laughs> like, I think Apocalypse was like bad, and then Dark Phoenix was also bad. <laughs> I don't really want to see any actors return besides um, Quicksilver. You know. Oh yeah, he was a great Quicksilver. Um, but. Yeah, it would be nice to have him back. But... Uh, I've heard I think some cameos, say... but I don't. I yeah. think I want to see. I want to see a new X Men team. Maybe even the proper first six X Men. You know, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Beast Boy. Not Beast Boy. What the fuck am I on? Um, the uh, Beast. Beast. Just beast. Angel. <laughs> I mean, he is a beast, he is a boy, so technically, mm. I was not wrong. You're not wrong, you're just not right, you know? I just got the naming convention wrong. I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Okay. Yes, they are... Cyclops, Iceman, Angel, Beast... Iceman. Iceman. I forgot Iceman. Did I say Iceman? Uh, you may have seen said Iceman. And okay. then, like, I just think it'd be cool to start with the classic costumes, the very, you know, the, ori the, the original six, um, and then bring in people like Storm and Kitty Pride, like, mm. after that. I don't know. But that's that's what I'd like to see do. I'd also ah shit. Oh. Um. Also, like Storm, like helped raise Kitty as oh. kind of a real like a role model and a parental figure, and I'd really like to see that in the movies. Just kind of you know, because a huge part of the X Men is like the idea of found family. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be nice to see that. Also, I'm just saying, that, like, fuck the rest of the Fantastic Four, just have a Sea Storm solo film. <laughs> but I've said that to you before, and you were oh, very yeah, angry. we did miss that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the second one was, like, not good. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's where and we then... That's where we were at, yeah, no, yeah. Second one, the first one was alright, it just needed more anyway, action. The second one was good, until Silver Surfer came out of that fucking <laughs> void thing, because that chase scene... Before and after he comes out of the out of the board. Mm. After that chase scene, the film is just like, nah, mate. The the, the cringe ass Mr. Fantastic dancing. But oh, yeah. Oh Christ. Sorry, did I just give you PTSD? <laughs> oh no, I just remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> I only partly apologise for my part in that. Oh god, I need to I need to watch it again. You need now. a drink. <laughs> uh, fantastic. And then and then we don't you talk about fantastic. You're gonna watch it again. You're gonna you're, yeah. gonna, you're literally looking for that fucking. I'm looking dance it up scene. right now. Fantastic <laughs> Four Two dance scene. Oh Christ, you do hate yourself. Are you okay, Bradley? You seem a tad masochistic and self-destructive. I'm fucking getting my. Right. Bradley, help me! Oh, I'd plug in another controller if I would, but if it's, if it's a. Oh God, this really is crazy. <laughs> I like how you were halfway through a sentence of "I'll help you" to oh, this dancing it bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And like he's doing that. I, I think I've lost like my co-host, people. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. He's, he's, he's gone to the dark Look, side of Jesus. Marvel content. 
the look he's giving versus like the the the, the, the shit he's actually the doing. The CGI. It's crazy. <laughs> like he thinks he's the hottest person in the room. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, no, you. Keep doing what you, doing. you were. Oh my god. You were not wrong. I forgot that existed. I, I can't believe how that... pleased you were to dis to rediscover it, honestly. That would be well, something yeah. I have no intention of ever seeing again. Well, there's there's some things which I, I just think I, I just so... Ow! Like, how, did, how did no one look at this Jesus, and think so we really damage. putting this in? I don't think and they were there's... thinking back then. <laughs> That's probably true. And then oh there's, my uh, god. Then, then, there's the, uh, then there's the one that everyone forgets, which, um, you know, we don't talk about. Mm, we don't talk we about don't Bruno. We don't talk about Fantastic. Oh, you know when I watched Fantastic? Hey, <laughs> when? I was supposed to be revising for my A-levels and I was just like, <laughs> this is on Netflix <laughs> and I'm <laughs> fucking bored of government politics revision. Oh my god. So, and you saw Why so I watched, I half watched Fantastic while reading boring shit about boring government structure. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. I can't oh. imagine what was worse to look at. Like you're looking down at your pages and you think, oh, this sucks. And then, and then I the watched screen, like, Avatar oh, the day sucks. of my exam. Um, Avatar is in Avatar, right? Avatar, not not the last Airbender. Ow. Uh, Avatar that's is in that's the Blue People. Seen. What, the, the Last seen, Airbender series? I haven't seen Blue People. I haven't seen oh. the Blue People. Yeah, I, yeah, literally, first time I watched it, day, the morning before my GovPol exam. You could tell I I was I was going to drop the subject for A2, so... <laughs> oh my god, I hate the red shit on the ground so much. <laughs> I hate this level so much. I can't believe I did this first try last time. What? I did this first, like, whenever I big it up, normally it goes well. But no, I'm just, I'm fucking, I'm just messing it up again and again. I should be better at this by now. It's just... Yeah, God, how many hours have you clocked in on this game? Well, yeah, but it, it's like consistent playing. Normally when I do this, I do... You know, I play Spider-Man every night for a certain amount of time. Once a week means that I'm kind of relearning <coughs> certain things. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. So my muscle memory is not really there because normally I'm quite good at adapting. But... Mm. Also, that red shit on the ground is just such a pain in the ass. Because even if you dodge the fuckers, mm. they're, the red trail they leave behind can still get you. Wait, that's not just a cool red trail, it's... No, it damages you, and it does so much damage as well. Oh, shit, okay. Oh, also, Sable is fucking useless in this fight. Like, yeah, who is she I, shooting? I... She's occasionally shooting. Let's go with that. Yep, she is definitely occasionally shooting, and then rockets appear out of nowhere with zero time to dodge. Oh, a minigunner, my fucking birthday. I was meant to say lucky day, but I'll go with it. My fucking birthday. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, the, those, those movies, all of them for that matter. Ow! All three of them. None of them really explain Doctor Doom in any way, shape or form accurately. Yeah. He's just because a magician. Up, yeah, because when I looked up about Doctor Doom later, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they gave him, like, electric powers in the first movie. And then Honestly, that, that one, was quite like... cool. Like, that fucking scared the shit out of me as a kid. <laughs> it wasn't conceivable from a comic standpoint, but it was cool and mm. scary. Cool and scary can be good. Okay, I'm just gonna fucking unleash the sorties on these fuckers. Or I'm gonna get shot by a minigun. Then for the other one, for, for, for Van Forstick, they just kind of made him god or something. Weird. God? <laughs> it felt like it. Did you say god or goth? Oh, god. 
fudge you. Because he had like massive telekinesis and he could make people do strange things. Yeah, and, and they beat him by punching him hard. Yeah. That's how to beat a god. I mean. Oh. I just thought he was kind of OP compared to the other four. Yeah. No, and, like, you're definitely he gets right. the powers in this and he gets his powers in the same way that they get their powers. Isn't it, okay, isn't it movie. consistent exposure though? Oh uh, yeah, he was in there longer or something, wasn't he? Yeah, but I mean by that regard, Sue should have barely got fucking anything because she wasn't even there, she just got hit by the the general explosion. Hmm. And yet she's actually, you know, if you're going by comics and natural growth ability, she's the strongest one. Ow. Oh god, the, 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 the flipping um, ending is so silly in the vent forced it. What? Oh, what, when it does the fucking, like, oh yeah, we need a name. That's fuck. that's fantastic. And it's like, oh, mate, this play point, that this, again? This facility, this facility is fantastic. <laughs> Oh, I think I've got it. I was okay. Yeah, very, very, very. And it's like, yeah, it's just. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to cry. Like it was just a bit too in your face. But that's the only way that they can make movies, Bradley. Oh my god. Yes, viewers are idiots. They don't understand basic lore. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he you bailed on that front flip there, Spidey. Oh. Hey, now let's get out of here. No. If we stay here, this hammerhead will come to fight. Bump, bump, bump. Fuck you. You motherfuckers. Miss <laughs> Marvel. And re re they do, I mean, obviously their powers come from completely different sources, but are they actually pretty similar in No, way? he can't shrink. She's a polymorph, he's just a stretcher. Ah, okay. His powers ah. is just, um, like, stretching elasticity, ah, stuff okay. like that, but with to extreme limits. She can't stretch as far as him, but she can grow, like, her entire body to, like, you know, Several t scales times, mm. while Mr. Fantastic can only stretch his his actual body mass. Yeah. I think is how it works. Of course, Mr. Fantastic has something more potent than. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Fantastic's coolest thing is always his mind. Like he's the least cool the member. Guy. Until you realise, yeah. I mean, I haven't seen, I haven't actually seen much of him doing anything cool. Oh yeah, because he only does like, cool things in the comics. Pretty much. But like, <laughs> but like, he's, he's, I, I would, I wouldn't be incorrect in assuming that he's, like, at least top five smartest Marvel characters. Yeah, I think until a few years ago, he would have been, he would have been, Number one or number two? Damn. But, uh. Um, I think it's Moon Girl. Moon Girl? Uh, look up Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. I think she's. I think she's top now. Ow! Jesus Christ. Okay, changing suit for every fucking time I get my ass kicked. Um... Do, 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 do. Okay. 
All right, let's fucking try this again. Oh, fuck off, I did the dodge technique. Um, are you looking at? Oh yeah, I did. I did. Moon, Moon Girl. Is it Moon Girl? Yeah, Moon Girl. She's a she's an human as well, or something. I, I mean, do not know. Top, quite at the top. Seems to say as much. Right. Okay. I'm fairly sure Sable just shot me. Mm. Oh, you fuck. I love this mission. I love it so much. This is going to be the longest stream just in how long it takes me to <laughs> complete this fucking mission. Hey, now let's get out of here. Oh. oh, I forgot. Yeah, it turns off a fucking gadget. Oh, why is Spidey in his pants? I'm changing suit every time I fail. Ow! I see. And I thought it would be funny. How about friends of Spider-Man? Is there an article that r rate, rates his best friends? I was gonna go for like just just looking up Spider-Man movies rank. Oh yeah, that too. That works. Let's see what we got here. Let's see. What we got. Okay. You know what? I'm not actually gonna look down and spoil myself I'm gonna find out as we go with me it. yeah fair enough okay <laughs> what what what's the numbers I mean it would be there's, there's nine of them there's nine of them oh um, is, is that which I think is that uh, wait three wait how recent is the article because uh, you got to remember you don't want to get too many no way home spoilers you don't want to risk that oh well it says including no way home so let's go for a different one Hey, here's one from Polygon. Good work. Thank you. Uh. Hey, the underpants did it. Oh. Riley, do you believe it? I finally fucking did it. I believe it. Get out of here um, this one has it as well, but. It seems pretty interesting, so do you mind if I just skip over, like... Like, just kind of not read the blurb underneath? Uh, yeah, sure. That's you. Okay, cool. And let's, uh, begin this one. This has 11 in it. I'm not sure what 11 those are going to consist of, but coming in at number 11 is, of course, that well-known Spider-Man movie, Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. 11? What, just because Early he's not... I like how all these articles are just pretty much... Uh, you turned up. Or Spider-Man barely turned up. So uh, they, these are getting ranked lowest because of lack of being able to grade them properly. Hmm. But anyway, continue. 
early in the process, a strong push was made to include Captain America Civil War as a movie with its own take on Spider-Man. And if you're going to include a movie that had Spider-Man but wasn't really about him, you have to include all the movies that had Spider-Man but weren't really about him. But it shouldn't surprise anyone that Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame are at the bottom of the list. I mean, it surprises me that Infinity War is the, at the bottom of any list, all things considered. Yeah. Civil War, Civil War might boast a fun and fresh introduction to Spider-Man, but Infinity War and Endgame's packed runtimes barely have time for Peter to do anything but blip into dust, traumatize Tony Stark, and serve, <laughs> as, a football in <laughs> and serve as a football in a contrived girl power moment. <laughs> football! <laughs> wow. On the other hand, Infinity War does let Peter do this unforgettable drag of Doctor Strange. I Are we using our made-up names? We're using our made-up names. That was like... I honestly thought that was one of the best gags in that movie. Mm. In a movie that was full of great gags. I do like the fact that it always seems to be a... Um... It seems to be a problem he constantly gets because he gets that own in his own movie as well. Yeah, it's just going to be a continuing thing that poor Stephen is never going to be allowed to call himself Doctor without it sounding mm -hmm. made up. Yeah, and that that was that was another thing I really liked in in Strange's movie uh, when 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 he was complain. Doesn't he complain to like? His uh, his girlfriend at at at, at the time or something, say, saying how he's never going to have a procedure named after him because who's going to who's going to want to use the strange procedure? Mm. Is that everything? Doctor Strange was a pretty good movie. I mean, at least for the visuals. I mean, it's it's, it's pretty standard superhero fare, but like. I, had some nice every time I, I watch I Doctor like Strange, I've probably said this to you before, every time I watch Doctor Strange, I like it more than the last time. You know? I enjoyed it the first time I watched it at the, in IMAX, but subsequent, like, on just a regular TV, it hasn't been as impressive, but I think that's just the, you know, it, but then, like, as I said, it gets better every time I watch it, so. Hmm. That's my take. Uh, so, coming in at number 10 is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oof. Let's start Let's start with what this movie does well. For one, it is beautiful. The film is brimming with light and colour, supercharged with a digital effects team that really knows how to make Spidey look, well, amazing. Paired with, a costume, that even, <laughs> paired with a costume that is even closer to the classic comics look than the one Tobey Maguire sported, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 serves up one of the best-rendered big screen. One of the best. One of the best. <laughs> one of the best-rendered big screen Spideys to this day. Which is a shame because everything else is not amazing. Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker and Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy remind, remain an inspired pairing trapped in a movie that never really see, feels like it's sense. about them. I, they have I see them. Amazing Spider-Man 2 as more of a rom-com than anything else. But yeah, that's like that is. That is the complete opposite take to yours. Well, I just mostly am able to just block out the bad shit, though, so maybe it's just... Oh, right. Like, Fair the enough. ear defender version of Amazing Spider-Man 2, where I'm just like, get... Let's get... Let's just let's just enjoy the superhero shit and get back to the rom-com bit, which I'm actually invested in now. But anyway. The, the same applies to Dane DeHaan's unsettling and edgy take on Harry Osborn back from some time away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> one thing that one one thing in Amazing Spider-Man 2 that made me laugh, and I don't think it was supposed to, was when Harry went ape shit and started chugging his furniture and going like, "You're a fraud, Spider-Man." <laughs> yeah, no, that that's that, I mean, there's no way to take that other than that's just fucking hysterical. <laughs> There's literally no other way to read that scene <laughs> as oh, anything God. other than just to make you laugh. I don't understand it. Wait, is that in the article? Is that something oh, you said? Oh, no, that was, that was me. That was me. Right, yeah. No, there's literally no other way to take that scene as anything but fucking hysterical. <laughs> yeah, damn. I felt so bad though, because like, here's a, here's a scene about Harry 
uh, asking Spider-Man for a cure for his terminal disease, and, it, and Spidey's like, oh, sorry, I can't do that, man. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm laughing at the guy afterwards. <laughs> oh, God. Um, anyway, to go back to the article, it's mm. even not that hard to imagine how the three of them, up against Jamie Foxx's unstable take on Electro, could have, still could have resulted in a fun throwback to 90s blockbuster ridiculousness. A modern successor to Joel Schumacher's campy Batman films. But the movie doesn't stop layering things, giving mysterious backstories to everyone it shows off, mourning characters before they actually die, always gesturing slightly off screen, trading a Spider Man story for a Spider Man RPG sourcebook. <laughs> In retrospect, this makes it a curious artifact of blockbuster maximalism. A movie full of movies. But don't mistake curiosity for unheralded greatness. This movie was a mistake. <laughs> it's a harsh closing line on, on that, isn't it? Is that still Amazing Spider-Man 2? Yeah, this movie was a mistake. <laughs> Bloody hell. I mean, it wasn't the best, but I... I, I, I don't think we call it a on. mistake. <laughs> it's not like that, you know, middle child which you just refer to as the mistake. Jesus. Um, okay. Okay, you don't need to hit that close to home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, coming in at number nine is... The Amazing Spider-Man 1. What? I Fuck know, off. right? Wait, that means it's below three! Like, Sam How is three! I fucking rated Amazing Spider-Man no, 1 the highest so that is far! Shit. <laughs> okay, let's see what he says, let's see what he says. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man also How old is this guy? Um, Question, I'm, did they grow up with the Tobey Maguire films? Because <laughs> there is definitely a nostalgia defense lens going on. <laughs> If you didn't grow up, like, I grew up the rate with the Raimi movies, they were my fucking first, like, way into, you know, way into Spider-Man. But I know that they're not perfect, and mm. I have no real love for them. Besides, yeah. you know, just the things that they got right. I, I really don't understand how people can just be like, yeah, no, Andrew Garfield, all of them, yeah, top of the, top of bad. the... So, the worst, okay, bottom of the list, brilliant. or yeah, technically top. <laughs> True. Just, uh, yeah, it's bizarre. Guarantee it's gonna be Spider-Man 3, Spider-Man... Imagine if it was Spider-Man 2, then Spider-Man 1, as you go up. <laughs> so it's like, he's just doing it yeah. fucking weird reverse order. Anyway, sorry, continue. Um... Amazing Spider-Man also gets a bad rap. Sure, it's not a great Spider-Man movie. And it's one of the ugliest, most poorly shot superhero movies ever. Fucking <laughs> hell! <laughs> Christ! This is this is a dragging set, <laughs> but the Peter Parker material almost makes up for it all. Ow. Sally Field, Martin Sheen, and Emma Stone make for a fantastic supporting cast, and Andrew Garfield is far and away the most talented person to ever play Peter Parker. These human bits make for some great. I feel like this was just this wasn't this wasn't actually one person writing this. Was this was like ghost written by the entire internet? Yeah. The entire Spider-Man fandom collectively coming together and be like, this is what public opinion says. I'm gonna put that into writing. Uh, these human bits make for some great at-home drama, and a rooftop confession is probably the most charming romantic scene in any of the Spider-Man movies. Unfortunately, it's all the Spider-Man parts that let this movie down the most. This, but despite the awful action, and the ugliest bad guy in any superhero movie for the last few years, <laughs> there is one redeeming Spider-Man related scene of Amazing Spider-Man. The bridge Garfield's scene. <laughs> yeah. Garfield's Peter crawls down to save a kid in a car that's dangling off a bridge and both of them are clearly terrified. When Peter gives the kid the Spider-Man mask and tells him it's the source of his power, the kid finds the courage to climb up and save himself from the car. Wow. It's one of the best single scenes in any Spider-Man movie. It nails the sweetness that makes Peter unique. The idea that the mask is a metaphor for covering up insecurities and weakness, and that it's a symbol that can give anyone strength. It's too bad the rest of the movie can't measure up. Oh! <laughs> 
I feel like this is coming from a fucking roast battle. <laughs> Bloody hell, yeah. This is like Tommy uh, Maguire versus yeah. Andrew Garfield at a roast battle or something, <laughs> which they would do because they're obviously friends in real life. Yeah. But I just think that's that's what someone's like trying to put it as. Every single every one of these bits ends with a fucking diss. <laughs> what, what was the final sentence of the Infinity War Endgame one? Um. On the other hand, Infinity War does let Peter do this unforgettable drag of Doctor Strange. Oh, okay. So that was actually quite that was actually quite positive. Mm. Then. <laughs> Number eight is Captain America Civil War. Okay. The well known Spider Man movie. <laughs> I really I'm, like. I'm, I'm checking the top. What does this. What does it say at the top? Yeah. It doesn't. Okay, okay, they have said what is the best theatrically released movie with Spider Man in it. But that does imply. <laughs> that's that's, that's, not, that's not a Infinity particularly War. snappy title, is it? Yeah, but that does imply that Infinity War. Is is oh, like load worse than Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oof. Which I struggle to get behind. Nice. Okay, follow the yellow one. So they're not comparing. Better not find any lions, tigers, or bears. Um. Ugh, tunnels blocked. But I think I can. It's a confused through. list. For sure. Yeah, they're not comparing like movies. They're comparing spider at content. I'm guessing. It seems that appropriate that Civil War is a divisive movie, given the title and the theme. But what do you mean this is... I don't know if people like Civil War. What happened with this one? I what do you mean? thought I liked Civil War. <laughs> Sorry, that I wasn't questioning strange. whether you... I wasn't questioning whether you did. <laughs> that was phrased really badly. Sorry about that. <laughs> I thought I liked Civil War, but I now apparently like... I'm not allowed. <laughs> M m the... <gasps> um, yeah, uh, but love or hate the rest of the story. It's a memorable it's debut for the MCU version of Spider-Man. Tony Talk's attempt. Tony Talk. <laughs> Tony, Tony Talk. Ta <laughs> <laughs> Peter Parker p picked a panel. Pepper Pepper. <laughs> Tony Talk. Tony Tarka fuck about that. <laughs> Tony Tarka Tarka Tika Tuka Ta. Tony Stark's attempt to recruit Peter Parker for his war against Captain America turns into a pocket introduction to this incarnation of Peter. A fumbling, achingly sincere genius high schooler played by Tom Holland. But the actual fight sequences give fans the other side of Spider Man. The one who's emboldened enough by his mask and the chance to use his powers that he keeps a steady stream of banter to, disor to disorient his foes and keep himself entertained. The airport battle is the movie's yeah, central showcase for a reason. The stakes are high, but Spider-Man in particular keeps things moving by trying to chat with all the veteran heroes he's fighting, and often outclassing. Hmm. He's every fanboy called up to the big leagues, excited to be just hanging out with his heroes, but also helping kick their asses. Sable jetpacks. Good money that didn't end on a, 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 a cheeky drag. No. Right, are you ready for are you ready for number seven? Because number seven is Spider-Man three. Wait, Spider-Man three is better than Civil War. I don't care how little Spider-Man was in Civil War. Yeah. Spider-Man three is better. No, wait, no, what? No, no, no. no. Spider-Man three is better. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I didn't mean that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna download this. I'm gonna download this, the, the, the stream after it's done. Splice that little bit out. Oh and, fuck! And your name is gonna Civil be War to is better than Spider-Man Three in just the, <laughs> in just the fucking introductory scene to Peter Parker is better than Spider-Man Three. I enjoyed Spider-Man Three on the rewatch, most of it, not all of it, um, mm. but. Have Civil War, just that first scene in Queens with Peter Parker is fucking oh, perfection. Yeah. I really wish they kept his dorky Civil War haircut as well. That's the biggest shame. What? Wait, hold on a second. From Civil War, Peter Parker's haircut immediately becomes, like, movie leading man. Like, fancy, full of gel well, yeah, and shit. Old, yeah, the swept back thingy but, that yeah. they always have. 
Oh, let, let me. T I actually forgot. Uh, let's see, civil. His hair's okay. His hair's better in No Way Home. I didn't like how they did his hair really fancy in Homecoming oh and Far From Home. And in Infinity War and Avengers, it's ridiculous. He looks like a fucking '90s rock band member. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I suppose you can kind of put that one down to like. Because I need to. Mask hair or helmet hair or whatever you want to call it. He looks too good for it to be mask hair. I know what's happening. That's also true. So much to you. God, you're right. He did have a silly dorky haircut. Yeah, it was perfect. And well, then let's see, me? let's see, homecoming, homecoming. Look, he's got. I think I know how we can take yep. down that monster. Now he's a, a now he's a movie star. Damn it! You let her loose. But yeah, no, oh. they did. I didn't they, even notice that. <laughs> they fixed it for no way home. Well, I mean, they didn't fix it. They just changed it to a hairstyle that I think actually befit is plan. befitting of him at that age and mm. him being who he is rather than a movie star. Yeah. I know. It just... uh, so, Spider-Man 3. Half of Spider-Man 3 is an excellent movie about a nerd who believes that just because he can do things no one else can, that he's better than everyone. Oh, that, wow. Is this going to be an actually really good take on Spider-Man 3 and make me completely change my mind about the film? Not that I don't like it, it's just I just don't like it as much as I like the other ones, you know? That part includes the initially lambasted but now correctly re-evaluated scene in which Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker dances down the street with his... Oh no, my parents were cringing at that bit. Like, they still can't stand that scene. I find it fucking hilarious, but they can't, they still can't stand it. Nothing has changed. With his new clothes and lame haircut, as everyone around him glances around at him like he's a moron. And the movie's on their side. This is a movie mostly about teaching you. You can't always root for the hero because sometimes they're just a bad person. And for wow. that moral, it's one of the most interesting superhero movies ever. At least until it stops being about that. Sadly, the second half of Spider-Man 3 is an overstuffed mess with a venom that makes no sense and a pretty boring Sandman. It's a shame that Sam Raimi's mostly excellent Spider-Man trilogy, whose other movies often end with quiet human confrontations of good and evil, end with a messy CGI battle, but in some ways it also presages the worst part of the long two decades of superhero movies that would follow. Hmm. Next up, coming in at number six, is Spider-Man Far From Home. Although it's ranked the lowest on this list of any main MCU Spider-Man film, Far From Home is every bit the breezy blockbuster it needs to be. Of the three MCU entries, it probably best shoulders the weight of enmeshing itself in the grander MCU plan, letting Peter genuinely forge a new identity for himself as both a hero and a team. If Tom Holland's Spider-Man has been defined by one thing, it's the way he's absolutely teeming with well-intentioned teenage energy, and Far From Home lets that shine. This movie seems, sees him juggling his spider obligations in grief post-Endgame, including the death of his mentor, Tony Stark, or should I say Tony Tark? <laughs> Along with Tony more... Stank? Tony Tonky. <laughs> Along with his more young adult concerns, asking MJ out. The film shrewdly balances these impulses as part of the grander story of Peter Parker. He is just as endearing as he is hopeless, with all his thoughts rising to the surface, while turns to, make, to alternatingly vulnerable and humorous effect. It might lose some marks for doubling down on the Iron Man Spider-Man, but Far From Home is far from a failure. I don't know if it really doubles down on the Iron Man Spider-Man thing. I thought it better defined the difference between them. Yeah. Like, are you not allowed to have an uh, emotional response when another hero that you like dies? Is that doubling yeah. down on a thing that people criticised? Yeah, no. like... Like, Homecoming, he was... Like, his suit had gadgets that in it, awesome. he had an AI. You know, it, it was... It was way more an iron... Yeah, like he was way more Iron Man then than he was in Far From Home. I yeah. mean, sure there was Edith, but Edith wasn't even with him the whole way. And he ended up facing against her, technically, yeah, by the end. Yeah. 
and the oh, final you could, suit, he oh, modded. Oh, man, consider that there. Yeah. Like, he yeah. used Star Trek, but it was his own invention in his head. using some of the blueprints that Tony created, but he modded it to give him control of the taser webs in a particular way that was actually really ingenious. Mm. I have an idea. Uh, five is Spider-Man No Way Home, which I'm skipping for obvious reasons. Wait, what, sorry? Sp uh, number five was No Way Home. Fuck <laughs> off! No Way Home is number five. Okay, I just lost all respect for this person. <gasps> Ouch. <laughs> yeah, don't don't read the description for that. Yeah, but... I've, I've skipped Jesus it. Jesus Christ. I'm down at... So number four is Homecoming. So that means that Homecoming has been ranked higher than... Uh... Well, everything is no, now no, ranked no, higher than No Way Home, but that's just... <laughs> well, yes, guy that's, fucking that's on? Magic, but still. Uh, let's see. Tom Holland's Peter Parker arrived fully formed and full of awkward teen emotion. In oh my god, that was dangerously close to unbridled swagger. <laughs> <laughs> In what? welcome contrast to the history of superhero movies up to that point. Homecoming imagines Spider-Man as an appropriately aged high schooler juggling the most dangerous after-school gig imaginable. The result is a classic high-pressure Spider-Man story where the threats aren't only coming from the villains, but Peter's capacity for doing it all as the clock ticks down. At times, Holland's delivering Robin Williams being in two places at once misses Doubtfire-level mania. And even when Iron Man shows up to save his ass, the world feels contained. New York is a collection of neighborhoods in Hong Kong. Well, wait, wait, what did you just say? say? And even when Iron Man shows up to save his ass, the world feels contained. New York is a collection of neighborhoods in Homecoming and their Peters okay. to save. I want you to, I want you to go back at some point and listen to how you originally said New York. <laughs> New York? Because no, you did, you did a Tony Tark on it. New Nork? Did I say New Nork? I, not New New Nork, you did like New Wark? Like, new Wark? I don't know new what it was, Wark. but it wasn't New York, it was... I don't know what it was, but oh I was just like, wait, what did he just say? <laughs> ah, brilliant. Uh, coming in, uh, so, so, uh, wait, that's not... I think I'm close to another uh, I haven't finished the description. The blurb, the thing. Here we go. Marvel's Kevin Feige and Sony's Amy Pascal reached across the aisle to bring Spider-Man into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But perhaps more importantly, they hired John, uh, director John Watts to do the job. Watts' previous film, Cop Car, was a grungy indie that matched the danger of two kids off-roading with a stolen police vehicle with the hilarity of two kids off-roading it with a stolen police vehicle. That is an interesting sentence they've put together there. What <laughs> brings the same energy to Homecoming, blending the comedy of Spidey's quips into bigger set pieces, and relying heavily on Peter's classmates. The dry-witted Zendaya as MJ, Jacob Batalan's overjoyed geek Ned, and... And? Ang... Jory? Ang... Oh my god, I don't know how to pronounce this person's name. I thought you were, I thought you were about to say Aunt May, but you just said Ant instead. <laughs> Ang, Ant, Ant May. And Jory Rice. Broadcaster in the making, Betty. That person. Oh, right. Anjori, is that Anjori or is that Angori? I don't know. You know they added her to TikTok. Added her to TikTok? For No Way Home, they did a load of... They, they created a... Dailybugle.net TikTok account and oh, has her right. doing a load of TikTok news things. It was really cool. And, it, and all the comments were just like, We are now in the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> Every comment was now canon to the MCU. Oh, God. <laughs> Tony Revolori's extremely online egotist flash. Mm -hmm. The splashes of genuine comedy. It's matched the seething, almost justified anger of Michael Keaton's Adrian Toomes, who's easily among the best MCU villains. 
Oh yeah. The action in Homecoming might rank lower than some of the other movies on this list, but Keaton's swagger elevates every <laughs> single <laughs> movie Spider-Man face off. Yeah, I, I know you said earlier about that was dangerously close to swagger. <laughs> uh, like in Ow. the best, like the best comics, what takes advantage of my Marvel lore? Character chemistry and fan fluffing tropes to give weight to those encounters, and what could easily be a paint by numbers trilogy starter. Everyone is on the same splash page. Coming in at number three is Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 1. The deep charm of Spider-Man is that he is self-made, scrappy, and just trying his damn best. Spider-Man 2002 exemplifies this more than any installment of a Spider franchise. Played by Tobey Maguire, this version of Peter Parker has a distinct dorkiness that his counterparts don't quite capture. This is a kid who realistically has a hard time getting the girl he likes to notice him and becomes the butt of jokes by Spider-Man. Yeah, it said he fucking stalks her. <laughs> <laughs> Mention that in your fucking article, mate. That's the, the right stuff thing. that really didn't age well, is like, the, how, like how creepy he comes across. Yeah, I totally felt that. Like, oh god. Oh shit! Like, was that really, like, okay at the time? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think so, but it wasn't, it was looked down as, I don't, I don't know about cute, but, like, more, you know, acceptable, I guess? Mm. Not alright, but just kind of like a hit, and y hit, hit or miss kind of moment, I guess? Mm. Uh, to continue. He does the right thing not because he reaps anything from it, but because he should, as he learns after Uncle Ben's tragic death. Willem Dafoe's Norman Osborn. You know, well, everything they said there, everything they said there, like. Could be attributed to most of the other ones? Yeah, could be applied to Tom Holland or to Andrew Garfield. Like, I mean, even, even, even Tom Holland, like, even though we don't see Uncle Ben, he does allude to Uncle Ben and he mm. does say. When you can do the things I can and you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you, which is, you know, it's, it it's, it's, it's running in parallel to yeah. the power them. It's the same message, it's just a different way of explaining it. And then, and then, like the Andrew Garfield, uh, and then Andrew Garfield, yes, he was also, he was also dorky and. and Socially in that, um, but not in an uh, almost cringy way. <laughs> yeah. And again, he does. He again, he does the right thing, not because he reaps anything from it, but because he should, as he learns after Uncle Ben's tragic death. That applies to him exactly the same way. Also, the main difference is that the, the point is that he's not supposed to be dorky and whatever. After he becomes Spider-Man, he grows so much from that second mm. identity. But he's yeah. no longer the same dorky wallflower kid he was as Peter Parker before Spider-Man became the thing. That's something like Toby totally carried on being the same Peter Parker all through the three of them. Andrew Garfield kind of had a level of confidence before he became Spider-Man. And then, and then the only time Toby Maguire stops acting, uh, stops acting like Toby Maguire and starts well, acting more confident, is the um, infamous dance scene. scene. Yeah. Yeah, with the dance and everything. <sighs> Which I can understand, but I also can't. Like, <laughs> I don't see how. You know, now that you mention it, I struggle to reconcile the fact that. I mean, I suppose you could argue it's because, like, the symbiote is, like, messing with his head or something, but... Mm. He, he, you know, he gained he gained a measure of power with his, when, he, when he became Spider-Man, yeah. and that didn't make him more confident. And then he gets the black suit, which makes him more powerful, and that makes him more confident. But also a dick. But also a dick. Or maybe she just really needed a uh, anyway. But then again, he was kind of being a bit of a... Well, actually, no, I don't think you can say he's a self-absorbed dick before he gets a symbiote, because, like, the only person he's, you know, talking to for the most of the early film is Mary Jane, who... He's... Oh my god, he, he name-dropped Ockham. He name-dropped Ockham's razor. <laughs> So 
I don't know what that is. Well, oh, I've um, heard it. I just can't remember. It it's, it's a it's a logical razor, which um, refers to um, the fact so that if you've mine. got two equally plausible um, scenarios or solutions to a problem, then the simplest one is usually the correct one. But again, it's a razor, so it doesn't work in every situation. Hmm. After all, um, you know, reality is sometimes stranger than fiction, as they say. Where was I? Ah, yes. Back on to the topic. Willem Dafoe's Norman Osborn is also incredibly chilling. The villains of Raimi's Spider-Man movies are on another level compared to other spider bad guys in film. They lean into the cartoonish comic appeal while still being fully compelling characters with close relationships to Peter Parker. And Defoe's Green Goblin is their indisputable king. The action scenes are fun, but also tight and intense, never lasting any longer than they need to. And yeah, maybe some of the scene transitions look like they came from iMovie. But that just adds to the visual charm of it all. <gasps> oh, so when, when it's bad, when it's bad movie making in a Garfield film, it's bad movie making. When it's bad movie making in a Raimi film, <laughs> it's charm. That adds to the visual charm of it all. <laughs> double Something standard. tells me there's a double standard given the age. I, can, I guess you could say it's for the age, but I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This movie made such an impact on me as a kid that I named one of my first original characters after Peter Parker and gave him a romantic interest named Mary Jane because I didn't know what fan fiction was yet. <laughs> For a second I didn't know that you were making that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that's that, that's the last bit of the of the That's the final bit of the article. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> My childhood crush was Kirsten Dunst that I've never grown past her. <laughs> and coming in to is Spider-Man 2. Did Marconi sleep before he turned on the radio? Did Beethoven sleep before he wrote the fifth? Did Raimi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did Sam Raimi sleep before he said, yes, I will make Spider-Man 2? Oh. <laughs> okay, very funny. I, was gonna, I, th I thought he was going to go for, oh, uh, for did Sam Raimi sleep before he directed Spider-Man 2? And I'm like, yeah, he probably slept a lot. You know, films take a <laughs> long time to be made. Yeah, bloody hell. The thrill of discovery motivates Alfred Molina's Otto Octavius, a genius who dreams of science guiding us to a better world fueled by renewable energy. It also suffuses the film that he's in, a movie that, free of the need to explain how Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man, can now explore what it's like to be him. And the truth mm. is that it kind of sucks. Hmm. Peter Parker is yelled at by his bosses, his teacher, his clients, his landlord, his crush. Spider-Man is blamed for New York's problems and for the death of his best friend's father. And then Peter's idol, Otto Octavius, goes mad at a moment that should have been brilliant. This is the pile of rubble piled on Peter's back. This is the heavy weight that he casts off as he leaps to his feet, because yeah, all that shitty stuff is worth it. It is worth it to make a movie this goofy and earnest and ultimately small about a guy who discovers the burden of responsibility he's taken on might be more than he bargained for, and almost gives it up, but chooses not to because there is value in being steady, in doing what's right for the sake of others in recognizing when a dream is selfish. This is Spider-Man 2. One young man's small and powerful realization played out across the skyscraper and elevated trains of a colorful city, changing his life and ours. Well, that was pretty lavish praise. <laughs> so, um, that means we're moving on to number one, and I think by process of elimination, we know what's coming. Yep. It's Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I mean, he's not wrong, but I'm mm. still pissed off about No Way Home being so low. <laughs> um, 
that's, that, 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 that's an interesting question that I would like to ask you. Does, and I've probably asked it before having said this, mm -hmm. but um, how close in quality would you say, uh, like, in, you know, how, cl how, how close are... Where no would I home? put No Way Home on that list, would you say? Would you put No Way Home, like, close to, to into the Spider-Verse? Would you say that they're... I'd put it below Spider-Verse because Spider-Verse is just the per like a perfect adaptation of Spider-Man. You know, it's just, it's just... It's just... It just does everything well. Um, however, No Way Home is the best live-action Spider-Man film. And not only that, like, and I don't just say that lightly, but it, it actually makes every previous Spider-Man film better. God, I can't By, like, you know, like, this guy's rated the Sam Raimi films higher on that list, which is fair, mm. but there's also a degree to No Way Home has made those films more, you know, just better. More, yeah. you know, just from just from how it just did a lot for every all of them. I think you know. Um. Shall I go on? Uh, yeah. Go uh, go ahead with the Spider Verse blessing. Well, that's probably when it's going to be. <laughs> Some of the entries on this list were more contentious than others, but our number one spot was unanimous across the board. Hmm. We're all completely sold on the fast-moving multiverse story that introduced Miles Morales to a theatrical audience and reminded us that American animation can still be visually distinctive and experimental. Into the Spider-Verse upholds all the traditional Spider-Man values, with a young hero learning about the grim sacrifices and heavy responsibilities that come with power. It's visually and emotionally intense, with high stakes and big drama. But it's also a blast with quick moving banter, lively visual gags out the wazoo, and a ridiculously ambitious design that blends street graffiti visual language, the rules of sequential storytelling, and widescreen filling compositions into an energetic wave designed to wash over views in one long glorious sweep. It isn't just an exceptional Spider-Man movie, or an exceptional animated movie, it's an exceptional movie, period. Jesus! What? I thought that was pretty accurate. No, 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 not... <laughs> like, he literally took all my health in one, in, well, in two hits. But most of it in one, in one hit. Um... Wow. Yo. So, I was wondering about Multiverse of Madness, because I yeah. am... <clears throat> I'm the kind of person who... <laughs> and so, yeah, I don't, I don't really watch trailers very much, and then immediately jump onto, um... Watching a trailer? Oh! <laughs> Not only watching the trailer, but... but seeing what other people think of the trailer and then yeah. going on to people who notice cool shit in the trailer and <laughs> you know what i mean because like um as yeah. regards multiverse of madness someone's noticed and pointed out should i say uh, uh you probably know already but like it's it's, it's the scene where um wonder and and, and those are strangely talking in the forest? Yeah. 
Uh, what, but it's not real? Yeah, that thing. Yeah. Do you think they're gonna make Wander a full-on villain this time? I think it's possible. Which is really funny because all the replies are like, Oh my god, she's so right! When Doctor Strange fucks up the multiverse, he's a goodie! When she does it, he, she's a baddie! And they don't really understand what WandaVision was going on. Yeah, the context of breaking the rules there is very different. I mean, Doctor Strange... We don't even, I mean, until, unless there's context within Multiverse of Madness that the, the Doctor Strange fucked up um, at the start of that movie rather than what he does in Spider-Man. Is this dude, is this Hammerhead dude okay? Uh, he decided to r have his body retrofitted with all this tech. So, probably He's not. not. got much body left then, has he? No. Yeah, no, he didn't really think that through, did he? <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, because I feel like, I feel almost like... The strange thing with Wanda is I feel like she'd be a really compelling villain if they yeah. just made her a villain and stuck with it. Because I feel like they try to excuse what she does. Mm. Which, but they don't, you know, like, they don't excuse what she does in WandaVision, it just... Mm. They just, um, you know, you can see why she did it, but they, it's not actually intentional. It's like, they, it, it wasn't their intention to make you actually think, no, she, it wasn't her fault. It was totally her fault, but it's reasonable. She is the villain of WandaVision, that's the point of it. No, I, I fully expect Wanda to go full villain in this, in this movie. She's still like... seen as like a villain or a curse or mm. a, you know a false mutant in the in the X Men books. Hmm. I mean, I were I I I don't think I'll mind where they take her after that. Whether whether they decide to like redeem her off of it, and and then she just goes full hero from then on, or if mm. they decide that you know she does decide to walk a darker path, like more in in a more permanent way rather than you know what they were doing previously I must to some as coffee. long as they just stick with a route for her yeah no i mean that's one of the good things about kevin feige and having a controller in the you know a charge of the all the mcu is that there's a consistent like you know follow through most of the time there have been hiccups and whatever but oh yeah like what you know, when new creative teams come in and be like, this is our idea, and they're like, oh, fuck, yeah, that's good, but that, that kind of doesn't really work for what we've done before, but we'll we'll just make it work. You know. I don't do hugs. Yeah, right. Of course. But, um, yeah, no, I agree. I think it would be really cool to see Wanda as a villain for a while and then kind of bring her back a bit. Yeah. You know, have have them resurrect Vision, and I mean, he's already let her be happy. There. Well, yeah, in a way. But, yeah, that's that's the thing that they could be doing. Um. So we know America's in it, we know... Oh, that's nice. Hmm. Bum, bum, ba -da -da. Oh. I can skip this. Woo! Is that it, or have you got like some side quest stuff to do? There's before? all side shit left to do, but I thought this is actually the shortest, like story-wise one, so I thought I'd just do it. Ready? Hmm. Uh, I'll have to stop the stream at eight thirty. So. 
<clears throat> I thought I'd try it. It'd be nice to get the story it's done, and then cheaper. if you can't make it next <clears throat> week, I can easily just do all the side shit on my own. Mm. So it's, you know, it's, good. it's beneficial to be able to just do the story bit while you're here, you know. Yeah. Not that we pay much attention to it, but <coughs> I always prefer yeah, we're doing. Yeah, talking about other stuff. <laughs> well, I prefer doing the talky shit over the story. It's a leap of faith, Miles. It's a leap of faith. Wee. This concludes Man, the story, but never like sleeps. He looked like he was gonna, you know, splat there. He has web shooters. He'll be fine. Uh, yeah, you got to the end of that article as well, didn't you? Yep, I did. Out of curiosity, is there one about Peter Parker's best friends? Uh, let me look, <clears> actually, because I think I looked it up and then went on. Didn't the find anything. Uh... <clears throat> uh, we've got Spider-Man's top ten superhero friends ranked, and we've got ten best friendships in Spider-Man movies. Uh, any of those... I've re I'll do the ones in the movies, because I think you'll know more of them. <coughs> Obviously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ten best friendships in Spider-Man movies. Spider-Man movies are certainly big up to have great action funny moments, but the friendships between the characters are the true heart. Coming in at number ten is Peter Parker and Harry Osborn from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fair. In the comics, the friendship between Peter Parker, and Andrew Garfield, and Harry Osborn, danger hand, is a pivotal one. It's <laughs> not like you were talking into your jumper all depressed, like doing the horn. No, I, I really don't fucking like that guy. I'm gonna give him oh, the horn. I mean, I never know how to do like when it gives the name and then the actor afterwards in brackets. Oh, hey, look at, look at look at this. Look at this. Hang on. Da 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 da. Do you see it? Hmm. Tell me when you see it. Oh, it says Insomniac Games on it. Yeah, and it's on a one of one of one of those things. What are those things called? Manhole cover. Yeah, that. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> um. Especially given the Spider-Man slash Green Goblin dynamic. 2014's The Amazing Spider-Man 2 tried to put it at the forefront, but it felt a bit forced in the eyes of many. Spider-Man, uh, not Spider-Man, Harry wasn't mentioned at all. Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Harry. Spider-Murray. Spider-Harry. Spider-Murray. Spider-Murray. Harry wasn't mentioned at all in the first installment, only to show up in the sequel and suddenly be a long-time friend of Peter's. Garfield and DeHaan didn't have the greatest chemistry, but the friendship was still sweet enough to be considered pretty good. Yeah, despite that, you've put it on number 10. Although, having said that... Oh, it's not just Peter... It doesn't just have to be Peter and a friend. Oh. Because number 9 is Harry Osborn and Mary Jane. In the Raimi movies. Yeah, I guess that's fair. The uh, Sam Raimi series of films made the relationship between Peter, David McGuire, Harry... James Franco, and Mary Jane Watson, Kirsten Dunst, into a complicated one. Peter was in love with MJ, and Harry was his best friend, but Harry and MJ started dating. Their romance ended rather amicably, and they remained friendly. While Harry and Mary Jane didn't get to share a ton of scenes to display their bond, they had a few nice moments in 20 2007's Spider-Man 3, especially after Harry suffered from them. What, when he stopped being a dick? Uh, yeah, <laughs> when he stopped being a dick. Number 8, Peter Parker and Quentin Beck from Spider-Man Far From Home. <laughs> How does this count? Well, I mean, you can see it. I They'll guess, probably put Tony Stark on here as well. Well, yeah, but it's still, you know... It, well, yeah, but Harry Osborn fucking turned back into oh, that's true, that's evil true. self and attacked Mary Jane, so... I think, you know... After accept the time that they're not being dicks to each other. <laughs> uh, following the death of Tony Stark, the MCU's Peter Parker, Tom Holland, was a bit lost. And he met Quentin Beck, Jake Gyllenhaal. That seemed to change as he found someone he could relate to in terms of being intelligent and something of an outcast. 
Quentin, better known as Mysterio, turned out to be a villain who was lying to Peter the entire time. That being said, it was clear that he somewhat admired Peter. Felt like a true possible mentor in the scene the two share on the rooftop was a simple yet effective uh, in establishing their kinship. Seven is Peter Parker and Harry Osborn from the Sam Raimi trilogy. Although really, that's quite high. <laughs> <laughs> Although the Amazing Spider-Man 2 had a Harry slash Peter relationship, it was much more prominent in Sam Raimi's trilogy. Right from the start, it was clear that these two guys were friends even if they came from different backgrounds. Their friendship also went through an interesting arc. They were close in the first film, but things were tested after Norman's death. The sequel saw Harry discover that Peter was Spider-Man, causing him to resent his friend, leading to a fight in the third film. Thankfully, they eventually reconciled just before Harry's death. Damn, spoilers! Spoilers! Number six, <clears throat> Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy from the Amazing Spider-Man One. Oh wait, yeah. Did you check when this is published in case it's got spoilers in um, for No Way Home? Uh, yeah, it doesn't have any. Okay. No Way Home in it. Cool. Is it, is it really old then? Well, sometimes a friendship can become a romance. That's the case with 2012's The Amazing Spider-Man, which had Gwen Stacy by Emma Stone as Peter's love interest instead of Mary Jane. Ow. She started out as friends, but the will they won't they aspect wasn't as pronounced as it was in the ring. The scenes were downright adorable, from simple conversations to the moment when they kissed. <laughs> they were on and off like Peter and MJ, but it worked better in these films. It was likely due to the electric chemistry between Stone and Garfield that helped carry these installments. Yeah, didn't they actually go out? Yes, they did. Oh, fuck. In mean, number five, we've got Peter Parker and MJ from the MCU. In 2017's Spider-Man Homecoming, audiences were surprised that Peter had a crush on a girl named Liz Allen, portrayed by Laura Harrier. They were used to him with either Mary Jane or Gwen Stacy, so it was an interesting twist when Peter's awkward friend Michelle, portrayed by Zendaya, was revealed to be nicknamed MJ. For most of the first movie, she dissed Peter, but it came across like something or someone doing so to hide their feelings. She paid attention to him and their friendship grew in the sequel before they became a couple. Like Peter and Gwen in The Amazing Spider-Man, the chemistry between the actors made this cute pairing work. Number four is Peter Parker and Tony Stark from uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Hmm. The introduction of Peter Parker to the MCU came in 2016's Captain America Civil War. There, Tony Stark, portrayed by Robert Downey Jr., recruited him into the fight against Cap, and from that point on, Peter was essentially tied to Mr. Tony Stark. He spent most of Spider-Man Homecoming trying to get his attention and affection. Although Tony isn't on screen much in the film, his appearances were important. Peter viewed him as a father figure, so his advice helped the hero grow. In 2019's Avengers Endgame, it's Peter being gone that triggered Tony to help with the time hunt, and Tony's death weighed heavily on Peter and Parker's hmm. Then we've got number three, so this is the top three Spider-Man movie friendships. And in number three is Miles Morales and Peter B. Parker from Into yeah. the Spider-Verse. Sticking with the theme of mentorship, there is none better than the one from 2018's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Miles Morales got his powers and Peter Parker offered to help, but was then killed by Kingpin. Then Peter B. Parker showed up from another dimension. This was a Peter who was past his prime and struggling, making him a poor teacher on paper. However, Peter eventually bonded with Miles and became the mentor he needed. The time together felt special and it helped Peter realise that he actually might want kids someday. Number two, Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy. Again, from Into the Spider-Verse. The only friendship more endearing than Peter and Miles in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was that of Gwen Stacy and Miles. Gwen first showed up as a girl in his class who laughed at his joke and flirted a bit with him in the hallway. Reveal that she was Spider-Woman from another dimension helped cement their friendship, but she was always there to help them. They related to one another due to their age, and every scene with them was adorable. Having to part ways was heartbreaking for them, but by the end, Gwen found a way to cross worlds and see her friend once more. 
And number one is, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Ned Peter and Peter. Peter Parker and Ned Leeds. Yeah. MCU yeah. introduced the character of Ned Leeds to the mix, and he quickly became an audience favorite. Ned is Peter's best friend, and the first one to discover his secret. Of course, Ned found it to be awesome, and offered to become Peter's guy in the chair. Ned has been by Peter's side at every turn, always acting as a sidekick. Whether it's building Lego Death Stars, stealing Flash's car, or working together against villains, Ned and Peter do it as a team. Even hmm. their simplest conversations are fun to watch, and seeing them reunite after the snap was a heartwarming moment. Yeah, that was that was one thing I liked in Home. Well, one one really good thing about Homecoming was like they they felt like teenagers. If that makes any sense, like they felt young. They didn't. They, mm. it, it didn't feel like they were adult actors pretending to be teenagers. Like, I I I I, I cite um, that scene where he's trying to deactivate the baby mode or whatever it's called in the suit. Yeah. And 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 they're in they're in that hotel room, and 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 Peter's standing on the bed. And bouncing slightly on it, and I thought, yeah, this is a kid, isn't it? <laughs> hmm. I love the fact that he literally says, "I'm tired of him treating me like a baby all the time," while bouncing on the bed. Yeah, while well, bouncing on a bed is, is. It's the perfect juxtaposition. It's a well. It's oh, just so a well done crazy. scene. It's a well directed scene. Hmm. I think I think I think that's fair. I guess Peter Parker and Ned, they do they do they did feel like friends. Like the fact they that are, they... yeah. <laughs> Like, given how little screen time Miles and Gwen got together, but the fact that they're number two, I really appreciate, because they do really well with the small amount of time that they mm. have, you know? But Ned and yeah. Peter have so much time together, and they're just so endearing and so believable as friends, both mm. before and after the spider bite, while you get the sense that with some people... Like, I never really understood why Peter was friends with Harry. Yeah, like, sometimes that feels a bit... They're on screen together. Hey, like, you know, you, you know, you know that awkward shit they do sometimes when they're like, when 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 they say something like, "Listen, we've been friends for a, we've been friends for years." But, yeah. You, you know, when they say shit like that, and it's just like, no one talks like that. I, I like, it's you... one of the most obvious like writing fuck-ups yeah. is when you have to say how long it's been the since the audience last saw something or you know like yeah. yeah we've been friends for years you haven't you haven't acted like this since your dad died stuff like that and it's like yeah could you have maybe tried to say that in a different way mm. no. but like with ned and peter like you 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 see ned bring up like the lego death star and how many pieces it's got and you see uh, and, and and Peter responds like excitedly, and it's uh, yeah, like, yeah. They, these are friends. They do friend things. <laughs> like that, that. That's what. That's what I think sets it apart. Because like Harry and Peter didn't like do friend things. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can do the whole. These guys are always hanging out together all over the place, but like, I don't know. I I, I didn't really feel it with Harry and, and Peter and Sam Raimi. Also, Harry was a bit of a dick. <laughs> like even before, even before he um became like vengeful and you killed my father Peter I'm gonna take my revenge on Spider-Man even before that kind of a dick. and I, I understand why because he's got major issues hmm like, I always about... say that like I you know even when Norman Osborn's going through full fucking goblin I still trust him more than Harry Osborn <laughs> I just don't yeah. like the guy he's just even when he's not evil, he's still just a massive jackass. Yeah. And he, uh, uh... Like, it's understandable that he's... But even then, it's just kind of weird that 
he simultaneously seems to resent Peter for, like, being the son that, that Norman wants. Mm. And yet he still hangs out with him and stuff. Yeah, he's the one who invites him round his house like, to... Yeah. Oh, the infamous line, I'm Peter, I'd like you to meet my father, Norman Osborne. <laughs> I'd like you to be my father, Norman Osborn. Wait, this is the first time you've met? You've never spoken- Wait, hold on a second! Oh <laughs> my god, you're right! Who introduces someone with their full fucking name? It's like, yeah, Harry, I know your last name. Yeah, I, I know your dad's like the leader of Oscorp. <laughs> like, what? What? <laughs> That is, that is pretty janky. Like, he's introduced to my father. I think he could have. I, 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 I do think they could have got away with him just saying Norman. They, they, there must have been a way. Like, we would have heard. We would have heard someone refer to Norman as Mr. Osborne or something when he's in the company, right? Hmm. Like, they could get away with him just saying Norman there and not being so fucking weird. <gasps> yeah. Ugh, I fucking hate this one. Bye -bye. Oh, wait, no, I don't. Wait, so did we got to the top of that one, didn't we? Yeah, we, we did, yeah. It concluded that Ned Leeds and is the best boy. Yeah. I mean, God, you know what? He he stole he stole the show in Homecoming when he when when the teacher came in while he was. Oh yeah, I mean that was a fucking that was more sacrificial than Peter's ever been. <laughs> that was like. Like, I'm, I'm amazed he didn't get this. If, 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 can we just agree that if the oh, blip geez, didn't right. fucking happen, <laughs> Ned would have been expelled from school for that. Oh my god. Like, oh my god. Schools do do not take that kind of shit lightly whatsoever. <laughs> like, yeah. I think some people got expelled from my school for a lot less in that similar area. Like, it wasn't on screen, he just said it because he couldn't think of what to say. Like, there was no evidence that was what was happening, but at the same time, like, just saying it was, like, fucking dangerous, mate. Yeah, like, the moment, the moment the person came in and, and asked what he's doing here, and he's like, I, I, I knew what he was gonna say. You know and who yet... that is? Hmm? That's uh, she's called Mrs. Warren, and I'm get and Miles this Warren is, is the guy who clones Gwen a million times and cl creates the clones oh. of Spider-Man. So she might be an adaptation of the Jackal Miles Warren. Oh but, wow! Or it's just a coincidence. But I mean, I doubt it's a coincidence. Or I, and I think it's also a very dangerous fucking storyline to adapt, considering the Clone Saga is widely renowned as the worst, like, time in Spider-Man comics. So it just went on for too long. It, you know how long it was supposed to go on for? I do not. The Clone Saga was supposed to go on for six months. That was six issues, one book. It went on for ten years. Hmm? It How? sold. It sold really well. I see. And so they just kept going. This is doing well. Let's 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 keep going with it. And yeah. But and then looking back, everyone was like, "Oh no, that was awful." <laughs> And I think it was even renowned as like being bad, but it was so bad it was good, kind of like, you know, sold well, kind of bad. Yeah. Like because people were so outraged, they had to know what was going, what would happen next, kind of thing. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. Oh, I am definitely ready to finish this in five minutes. I am very tired. I don't know about you. I am somewhat tired. Yes, I should have brought water. 
Like I'm pretty You can go and get water. You're not I'm not I, I am not chaining Bradley to his <laughs> desk so he can't leave to get just stuff to survive. <laughs> You're allowed to leave Bradley for water. I mean, and, yeah, and but, like, if, it, if, it, if it's finishing in five minutes anywhere, I can just wait the five minutes out. Well, yeah, but then you'll have water for five minutes longer. I guess that's true. This is probably why I'm always dehydrated. <laughs> because you're constantly just going, oh, I can get it in five minutes. I'll, be, I'll, just, I'll just wait a sec. I'll, I'll get it in a, in a bit. And then you don't. Yeah. Oh, good to finally kick ass in a fight and rather than getting my ass completely destroyed all day. <laughs> Have you beaten this game on the highest difficulty? This is the highest difficulty, and yes, many a time. I just don't normally do as badly as I have been today, Jesus. I think it's because I'm not concentrating on just the game. Well, true. You're gonna learn this when you have to stream and talk next week. Not next mm -hmm. week, the week after next. When you're doing this. Because you're gonna have to fucking play Watch Dogs and talk, and, you know... <laughs> so, you're gonna... it's gonna be like... You're gonna be really bad at Watch Dogs. But you'll have an excuse, so, you know. That's the best thing. I can either be crap, or I can be crap with an excuse. So, uh, let's have an excuse. Reports are from the last year or so. But last month, Yuri assigned herself to all of these cases. Was Yuri the one who left all those recordings? Mm. Okay, Yuri, I'll try to do a bit of the side content, but for obvious reasons, I won't be doing all of it. Oh god, no, I mean, Jesus, dude, I've been... It took me over a year, and I still haven't finished all the side content. I've done... The only... I think, actually, I think the only thing I haven't done is the poke poker game challenge thing. You know. There's poker in Watch Dogs. Like yeah. Is it the guy on the tape? Watch Dogs won. Well, just unit. basically, I think we'll, we'll, we'll just have a look at the side mission things and I'll be like, oh yeah, you've got to do those. Those are great. And there's the trademark mm. yellow. And then I remember doing the chess ones. I like the chess ones. Oh yeah, the chess challenges were pretty cool. Uh, you should definitely do the gang hideouts just because they're a good stealth practice and they're fun. Mm. Yeah, Don't... I feel like I'm, I'll take I'll... stealth seriously now because like I used to, I I used to just be so bad and impatient at stealth, and then Ghost of Tsushima <laughs> happened, and now all of a sudden you, <laughs> you care about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well you've been good at stealth in Far Cry, so. It's not like you go guns blazing on that. <laughs> yeah. Of course, in that, you've got the... Uh, I have access to... Arguably the best stealth weapon. A silenced sniper rifle. You have a silenced pistol in Watch Dogs. I see. That was... The, that's like the first weapon you get. Oh, really? Damn. <laughs> yeah. It's over-fucking-powered. Oh god, I remember playing Watch Dogs and back all, all the all the time back when when you know Kellen was here. Yeah. And 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 like <laughs> he he was he was he was he was taking the piss out of um uh oh god what's his name the protagonist Aiden Aiden that's it Aiden's voice Aiden's voice yeah he's like yeah. <laughs> Like, I can imagine um, him not being the best backseat driver. <laughs> He's like every be... every every dark gritty vigilante hero has to sound like Batman. <laughs> well, <laughs> Batman, Batman and Wolverine. Like Batman. Batman and Wolverine combined. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say Wolverine. Who smoked yeah. a pack of? Who smoked a pack a day? It just picks me up when those when those. Guns, Jordan. I need to go to this. I don't even know how he does that, honestly. <laughs> it's such a strange, like... 
Regardless, and the fact that it's like not even his vigilante voice because it does flashbacks of him happy <laughs> with like his yeah. niece and nephew, and he's still doing the same fucking vigilante voice, and it's like Jesus, oh, dude. I... Yeah, God. Um, but I was gonna say something about Wolverine, yeah, because mm -hmm. the, the one that they're the one that Insomniac's making, right? Mm -hmm. They should cast that guy. <laughs> I was thinking, what kind of what kind of game is it going to be? You know what I mean? Like, is it... Because if it's going to be, you know, your, your usual superhero sandbox style thing. I think there'll be a motorbike for him to get around with. Because uh, I imagine he could do some interesting stuff mm. with, you know, his claws and everything. But Yeah, he could climb the walls with his claws and then just yeah. jump between them and... It'd be interesting to see how they implement his healing factor. <laughs> you, you fall down. You, you, you don't take fall damage. Oh, wait, you wouldn't take fall damage because of the adamantium skeleton. Well, no, he would. He'd break it. He'd still. Wait, would he break his legs? I mean, it's adamantium. There's no way of falling. Well, yeah, but it's like it's individual, it's individual skeleton bones, isn't it? So if he falls, it's still going to split, isn't it? It's still going to break his skin. His skin's not made of adamantium. That's true. I like, imagine you just you just go on the you fall, and you do take the fall damage, and he just kind of splats, and is and, and he's like ah, and then he just recovers from it. That's a damn good point, though. How exactly do you have a health system in a game with a character who's got you know a crazy well, healing factor? Well, in Superman, who obviously can't fucking die or take damage from stuff, they had it. They had Metropolis be the health bar. So in every mission, if Metropolis took too much damage, he would it um it would fail the mission or you'd reset, as if you know the character had died instead of Superman, which I thought was a good idea. It's a good way of doing it. What was that? What was that for, by the way? Uh, what do you mean? I just that sounds like it was a game. So what system? Oh, uh, I think it was Superman Returns. Uh, aiming. Stunning. Are you a professional? Uh, da 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 da. This certainly is a wide open sandbox. Are we looking at the Superman? Yeah. yeah. That is that is PS2. That is. That is an interesting concept, making there be no health bar, but like they're attacking the city, kind of. Hmm. Gotta find the last bomb. Oh, someone's put in the comment. Could you imagine a Superman game with the technology we have now, with destructive environments and huge boss fights with Dark Side and Doomsday? Man, it would be a joke. And then someone underneath has said this game actually made you feel like you were Superman. Yeah. We need a new Superman game. I think they meant that one unironically. I always find it funny when they say that, because I know what they're trying to say, but. It's just been memed to hell. Yeah. Yo, this Spider-Man game makes you really feel like Spider-Man. It makes you feel like the unbridled swagger. <laughs> the unbridled swagger of a queen's teen or whatever. A queen's, a queen's middle-aged, <laughs> barely employed. <laughs> a constantly suffering young adult. Gotta find out where it is. Maybe one of our fans posted something about it. If hmm. only I knew someone who had it's time gone to scour a bunch eight, of social 30, media posts. Seven. Oh shit, so it is. Hang on, I just want to wait for this phone call. There it is. Hello? Hey, hey Pete. Just checking in. Miles, are you... Did you 
just hear what I said? You said hello. Huh. Guess your timing is just weirdly perfect. Uh, anyway, it's mild. I, got a mission I just like the fact that Peter's like, if only I had someone to look to scout for me. And then Miles calls him, he's like, aha! Like a spider mission? Okay, sure. I'll call you as soon as I find something. Oh, damn. I went to fall. <laughs> Damn. Well, Miles patrol. just deflated. <laughs> Big oof. Bum, bum, bum. The moment when you're swinging and moving so fast but the city's still rendering in. in. <laughs> the shadows, the light, yes, you bro. can't fucking keep up with me. I'm expecting... I think I may have fucked it. Is there no- oh, there it is. Okay, never mind. The game is working still. I'm just gonna do this, because I think this is the, literally the last thing I have to do uh, um, to, get the la to get the last mission of that bit. And then we will call it day. Okay. We will call it day and night. We which I hope the next game has, because it'd be really cool to have a day and night cycle with dynamic weather as well, please. One heart Wolverine's uh -huh. teeth covered in adamantium. Good why, question. Why are, you, why are you on the train? Uh, because I like the animations. That is a cool animation. Um, Wolverine's no. teeth. Um, I'm gonna go with because um, uh, the teeth. What was the message? Uh, is the message? You said it. What? Oh, the message that just went. The me the message that just popped up on the on the stream. Um, someone's saying vum omg. I am not quite sure what this means. Yeah, it's probably a spam bot then. <laughs> probably a spam bot. Probably a spam bot. Do you still do you clip um, stuff from when we're playing games together? Oh yeah, yeah. Do you ever trim them down? I try to remember. <laughs> uh, sometimes, sometimes when I can you... remember to trim them down. But usually, like I've, I've, you know, I, I clip it immediately after it happens. Mm. So I just have to go to the end and be like, oh, yeah. I wonder what happened here. Yeah, I, oh I do God. that. I do that, but then you have to do like. Um... What the hell? Oh. That that subtitle there. Therapist that was dying. Up. Yeah. Gunshot. Therapist dying. Yep. Bloody hell. Death sound. But um. She doesn't do anything without a reason. No. Um. Why did me on a grisly crime scene tour? What are we talking about? I'm dumb. It'll be nice to see her. Maybe help her deal with whatever she's dealing with. I can't remember myself. Great. Wolverine teeth. Um... Yes, Wolverine's teeth. No, 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 no. But more recently than that. I was just trying to peddle us back. What did, what did you say before Therapist dying? Uh... You know, you could just go back on the stream. Oh, you, I guess I could. <laughs> that's, that's hard, I have to get my headphones in. Oh, I think subtitles work. There might be subtitles. Or it might they might not work while the stream's on, I don't know. Subtitles slash closed captions. Damn, okay, they'll only work after the stream's over then. I know, Miles, I know. Talk soon. Okay. Hmm. What were, what were we talking about? She's a victim of her own fans. Most criminals have an end. Um, but I don't think Screwball does. Superman? It's just a social media ad. No, it was more recent. Was it? What? What the fuck? What the actual fuck? What are we talking about? Uh.
Watchdogs? Something about the watchdogs or something? Um, stuff from when we're playing games together. Oh, we were talking about clipping. Oh, yes. Clipping clips and stuff. Yuri, what did you do? Yeah, because, um... Because obviously, I, I sometimes go a little bit back just for the lead-in, for context and shit. Yeah. But honestly, if you can get stuff down to like, anywhere between 30 seconds and 10 seconds, or, you know, a minute, and you make it faster, you should definitely post them somewhere, man, because well, it's just nice to get stuff out there. Some people put their trust in fate, or karma, or whatever. But I and if you did it on TikTok, I could, I could, I could at you, and then. Whoa! Is this person you know just? Has Yuri just so murdered this guy? Yep. She is. She is quite the um. Oh punisher God, on us. Yep. Makes sense now. What Yuri did to Hammerhead. She's been struggling with this for a while. She's always held in her emotions. That must take a toll on her. But she's also the most tenacious. Sending you something, and then we'll call it a day. This was a bad guy for okay. sure. Killing him? That's too much. Ba -ba. Okay, yep. Miles. We're gonna end the stream. Miles, that's great. Oh wait, why did I do that? I should have ended the stream and then saved. Well, I'm done.